values as part of the standard for the past 10 years. There are a couple of slides on domain harmonization that we will go into a little bit later. Stewardship and change management rules and processes need to consider when we start harmonizing at the data layer. Stewardship and change management rules are equally applicable as soon as we create the metadata standard layer and treat it as a key asset. Again, let me reiterate, please feel free to send any questions our way as we go through this presentation. So, so far we have covered the need for a system-independent standard metadata layer that is linked to the existing landscape and expanded scope of metadata in the context of MDM. Now let's focus on the structuring of the standard layer and how to link it to existing technical metadata. To begin, let's bring back some of our existing metadata assets. The concept of the enterprise metadata standard layer is independent of any system and is an enterprise-wide repository that can be built over time. In the following sections, we'll address different approaches for building this standard layer. The four key components of an enterprise standard layer, most of it applicable in a non-MDM context as well, are enterprise standards. This includes standard terminology, structures, definitions, representation constraints. There are two aspects that make up a term or element in a standard, its meaning or semantics and its logical or physical representation. Business rules and process. Business rules are embedded everywhere in an enterprise. A simple rule, for example, would be that tax ID is a nine-digit numeric string in U.S. to a rule that for a derivative trade with four legs, the MTM calculations is XYZ. This also includes cleansing, consolidation, and survivorship rules. Processes include creation and change management, dated data lineage, etc. Standard domains. We categorize standard domains and the corresponding system-specific mapping as metadata. This is something we've seen numerous times during implementations. The domain harmonization process is a significant contributor to what the to-be structure should look like. We want to emphasize harmonization techniques as it's critically important from a BI perspective to get it right. Governance and stewardship. Though typically this is thought of in an MDM context, governance is just as applicable to any subject area where data quality initiatives are to be implemented. Standard metadata is system independent. Technical metadata is derived from systems or other metadata assets, which are typically system specific. Now this is a 10,000 feet view of model options, very high level. One option to build the standard layer is by creating logical enterprise data models. This approach derived from a data architecture focus has been done in large organization and to a certain extent been very successful in defining standards. We have added domain values as most case tools today also propagate the same premise. In this standard data modeling technique we see the concept of entity and attributes. Entity attribute very closely tied to table column which has its pros and cons. In the example here, customer has country of risk. Address has country of physical location. These are two different attributes. Tax ID for customer would be different from tax ID for a vendor. Customer type ID is the attribute, and the values we have are strings. Some of the minor nuances that we have seen with this approach. The downside, as in this example, is that there, again, is no reusable attribute and the domain values do not fit at the attribute level. Let's look at option two. This option is based on a standard such as ISO 11179, where the focus is centered around creating standard atomic data elements. 
An atomic data element is a cross between the semantics or meaning and reusable representation, in case you didn't know. This example indicates how the same model, as we saw earlier, manifests itself in the standard. Representation is reusable. Meaning is different for the country. If we had another standard representation with ISO char 2, for instance, there would be four data elements. This published standard is often found in federal data management project, projects, and, and that's a benefit. But one could create too many atomic data elements if the granularity chosen is too low. The standard is complex and not particularly flexible. Domain management is complex. The third option displays a model we have seen work successfully and that also avoids certain issues inherent in option one and two. It is a homegrown standard that Data Foundations has implemented. The key is to get both definition and representation reused as much as possible create relationships as relevant, provides for a single column to be decomposed into multiple attributes and vice versa. Here, there is no explosion of attributes. Enumerated domains are handled separately and the data integration is seamless. Like I said, it has lived up to the challenge. Any of the options can be effectively used or other options that might work better in your organization can be chosen. Key is system independent. That's the main point, as well as reusable metadata standard. Business rules are everywhere. They are embedded in the models, embedded in ETL, embedded in Java code, embedded in spreadsheets, embedded in the cafeteria. No, they're not. Some of the typical rules are below. The key is to look at the rule type and the level. Some of the levels are more at the relationship level. Some are more at entity attribute. Some do not even fit the paradigm and, well, we're, we're still working on that to find a way to, that they fit into the picture and what is the best way to define their role in a non-technical way. Additionally, we are still developing best practices in terms of representing, creating, and reporting on process metadata as part of the enterprise metadata standard layer. Processes, as outlined below, are also evolving in shape and form, but we'll be happy to present those enhanced concepts to you at a later time. When defining standard process flows, there are several variations that need to be considered. Some of these are more geared towards process change in the way data is managed, and some of the processes are more to do with documenting as is. These include creation and change management process, 